Good morning and welcome to Grim Survival. I have no clue what day. I think it's the 9th. 9th of October. I got the door open again just because it's nice weather outside. I hear crickets. There's some geese not too far from here. Tomorrow is my 10th anniversary. I was married 10, 10, 20, 10. And tomorrow's 10th. Yeah, 10 years. 10, 10, 20, 10. Yeah, my kids are older than that. Don't, don't ask. Because I ain't telling. This is going to be one of those religious discussion type videos. If you're not into religious discussion type videos, then you should pay extra attention. You really should. I don't believe my Bible. I'm just going to start out by saying that. I'm going to take it out of the case here. And I'm going to tell you I don't believe my Bible. This is the King James Version. And I don't believe it. Some things, I, I believe certain things, but there's a lot of it that's been mistranslated. And the more I study, and the more I listen to people who have studied, and the more I pay attention, then the more I don't believe my Bible. A lot of Bibles cut out the name of God. They replace it with the Lord, or replace it with, you know, just the word God instead of actually saying his name father Yah Yah Yahweh is what you know most of these books should say and if you check in your book and I you know I'm trying to find it because I forget I really do I don't I don't remember things very well from books I'm not one of those people that can remember things from books very well even this one this is my Bible by the way I have another one on its way i bought one that was recommended by bear independent and it's called the scriptures it's a more accurate translation it keeps the original names of yeshua which has been translated into jesus by a long line of stupidity how do you get jesus out of yeshua anyway yeah this is going to be me rambling. This whole video is going to be like this. So if you're still paying attention, thank you. Because I have a question. I have a question. I really do. And I don't understand. I hear it in a lot of things. Now, I, I the last church I actually attended before I gave up on churches. I'm cutting my hair today. I'm cutting it today. It's getting on too long and... Yeah, I just need to cut it. Anyway, that's completely not the point. What was I saying? Yeah, sorry. I'm I'm having one of those days. I am. I can't stay on track. I keep getting distracted. Every time I try to get to the point and, and study my book here, I get distracted by some stupidity or another. I need to just go sit in the woods and read my book. I'll be sitting there, Bigfoot's going to show up, try to take my book away, right? <laughs> Bigfoot. Uh, that's funny. Anyway, as I was saying, I have a question. I finally remembered it. And so the last church I attended before I stopped visiting churches due to the church itself was an apostolic church. The apostolic church believes that the Old Testament is irrelevant and you should just follow the New Testament. They also believe that Jesus is God, one and the same. Yeshua. I'm gonna I'm gonna refer to him as Jesus for the simplicity of this video, because a lot of people won't understand his actual name. So I'm gonna refer to him as Jesus. Yeah, because the church has put it in my head so thoroughly that yeah. See, every church I've ever attended, my family was. Uh, we went to Assemblies of God Church, and we went, you know, on Sundays every now and then. Mostly before the holidays or when one of my parents was feeling, you know, ashamed for, of themselves, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So, Assemblies of God Church is an offshoot of Pentecostal. So, we started following more Pentecostal rules, as and I explained in, in another video, dress codes and all that other stuff. And then we, you know, I was looking for a Pentecostal church in an area that I was in. 
and we came across an apostolic church instead and we started attending that for a while and it was a very good experience for the most part with people were very nice and and yeah but anyway back to my question my question is how can if Jesus Jesus was God God made flesh that's what you know, Bear Independent said that today, and, and I, I really, I'm not, I don't understand, and I really don't understand, and I really am asking this question. This is not being sarcastic. I'm not trying to be an ass or anything like that. Sorry for the A word, but that's just what came out. I really have this question. I don't understand. If Jesus is God made flesh, who is he praying to? You know, just before the crucifixion, he prayed. He went off by himself by a rock and he prayed to the Father. He prayed, do I really, you know, according to the movie I watched, and yeah, yeah, I will just leave it there. According to the movie I watched, that's what he said. He was like, do, is there any other way? Do, is this the only way? That's what the movie said. So, uh, you know, we need to do some more study in here. Me and this book need to, yeah. Anyway, so it, uh, and you know, on the cross again, he looked up and he's praying to the Father. Who is he praying to? If he is, if he is God made flesh, who is he praying to? I don't, I don't understand that. I really don't. And there's a book, uh, Heaven Is for Real. It was made into a movie. It's about a little boy. The little boy died for a very short amount of time before he was resuscitated, and when he died, he went to heaven. When he was in heaven, he met his sister that he should have never known. This, this was a little boy. He was like five or six years old, if I remember correctly. He should have never have known this sister because she was miscarried. How did he, and he, when he came, he's resuscitated, he's having these conversations with his mother, and he's telling her all these things, and these people he met, and he met his sister, and she says, well, you don't have a sister, and he said, well, miscarried or something like that, and you never gave her a name, and yeah, this boy met the father and the son see everything i've been taught by the churches that i have attended say there's the father the son and the holy spirit so how can the son be the father you know according to this book and according to everything i know and like i said i don't believe this book this is the king james version i have a new international version i have I have a lot of Bibles. Let's just put it that way. I have a lot of them. And I think I'm going to go through them all and start comparing them when I get my new one. It's it's on its way. It's in the mail. Thanks to uh, subscribers, actually, I was able to buy it. I was. Somebody's actually trying to call my phone right now. I don't know the number, so I'm not answering. Have a sip of coffee, though. I made this coffee about two hours ago. Still hot. That's not the point of the video either. I really, I really, I'm really confused on this. If he is the same, how can, he can't be praying to himself. That would make no sense. And according to everything I've studied and everything I know, it's not the same. Am I wrong? I, I, I'm not trying to be. I tell you i'm not trying to be sarcastic about this this is a very serious question i really need somebody who has studied more than me to explain this to me and i i need to have a discussion about it. i wish i could do this video live i really do because we would have a long discussion so if he's one and the same i mean there's been a lot of other accounts of people who have gotten to visit heaven for a very brief period of time and have met both the father and the son so there's two different entities supernatural beings whatever you want to refer to him or them as my belief from what I know about energies and what I know about power and what I know about you know the the, the simple understanding that my little tiny brain has it seems to me like the father took a piece out of himself and implanted it into Mary, the mother of Yeshua, whose name was not Mary, by the way. 
I'm going to lose a lot of subscribers after this video, aren't I? <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. I really, I really do need this question answered because it's confusing me and I don't like being confused. I like to have understanding and I pray for understanding. My understanding after praying for understanding led me to sit here in front of this camera and, and talk to you guys and ask you. Yeah. I'm, I'm really anxious for this new book to get here so I can read again. Because I'm going to compare, I'm going to set down, you know, the three prominent versions. I have the King James Version, I have the New King James Version, I have the Interna New International Version, I have, you know, translation after translation after translation, and they all have different information in them. If I compare just the first few sentences of this book compared to the International Version of the book, I'm going to just go over it here, and I, I don't have the International Version in here, it's on my desk. Oh, uh, where am I? Uh, you have to give me a second here. This is this is. Huh. I'm trying to find the. Um, yeah, let there be light. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm looking here. Just just bear with me. Bear with me. I know. I know. It's on the next page. Oh, oh, oh. Mm. I'm going to find it and put it in a different video because it's frustrating me and I'm going to be sitting here for five minutes looking through this. I, I end up having to edit this video. You know what? I'm going to find it and edit this video. Hang All right, guys. It's been a few minutes. I have my, uh, this is my, uh, where is it? The NIV, New International Version. I still have my King James Version over here. I have a new King James Version I didn't bother to bring out because it actually says something different. I'm going to read from the book. I am. This is going to be just horrible. Where was I? All right, I'm in Genesis chapter 22, 14. Verse 14. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jehirah. Yeah, I probably butchered that. As it is said to this day, as it is said to this day, I'm going to stop right here. Because this one don't say that. This is, where am I at here? 22, 14, it's a little print. I got to I gotta zoom my eyes in on that. Okay, 13, so this is over here on this page, 14. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. And to this day, it is said, the Lord will provide. These are different. All right, that's, that's, it doesn't say the same thing. This is... I'm just proving the point here of translation. All right, so, yeah, where was I on this other one? I had another point. It was Exodus 17 something or another. I don't remember exactly where. It was Exodus 17, chapter 17, verse 15. Moses built an altar and called it, The Lord is my banner. That's what this one says. The Lord is my banner. So let's go over here to Exodus uh, 17, no, did I say 17? I lost my place. Oh, 15. Exodus 15, sorry. And Moses said unto his father-in-law, no, that's not the right one. <laughs> what, what? I just said it. Do I got to replay the video to remember what freaking chapter it was? 15. Exodus 17, 15. Oh, I was in 18. I was looking at the wrong one. There we go. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it Jehovah. Okay, that was just, all that was just to prove the point of why I don't believe this. Because the translations are, are so different in every version I have. The new King James Version translates it differently. The international version translates it differently. Any other version I've ever read translates it differently. There's older Bibles that actually have the name Yah, Yahweh in there. So, yeah. My original question still stands, though. How can, how can Yeshua be... The, how can Yeshua be the Father, Yah, in the flesh and be praying to someone? I'm confused on that. I really am. I really do want somebody to explain that to me. Somebody who has studied more. I really do. And I'm not going to guarantee I'm going to believe you just because you say it either. But I will definitely take what you say and look into it more. I am not a pastor. I am not. I do not understand a lot of what's in here. I don't. And that's why I've gotten the other version to hope with better translations, maybe better things, keeping with the proper names. Proper names are very important. This book right here, I'm going to show it to you 
I'm only showing you this. This book has my full name. First, middle, last name. My parents had it made. Names are important. Names give power. Names used to mean something. Now people just name whatever the local celebrity or whatever their favorite person is. Um, what is it? That singer, Billy. There's a lot of girls being named Billy now because of the singer. At least she covers herself, right? She's still kind of loopy. I've, I've watched a couple of her videos. I don't know why. Uh, the James Bond one. The James Bond. That's what it was. The James Bond theme song I watched. This is a lot of rambling in this video, isn't it? Anyway. I really don't believe my book. I don't. I need to. I actually have a, a Bible verse on my Glock. I do. It's on the back plate. And it's the, you know, uh, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I shall fear no evil. All right, this has been my religious video of the day. I should I should make more of these. My subscriber count usually goes down after the fact, probably because of YouTube doesn't like me, or it maybe just because the people don't like me. I don't really care. I'm a sinner. I am. I have faltered and I have failed. Anyone who says they haven't is failing, just by saying it. We have all sinned. Everyone has sinned. It's a sad statement, isn't it? Repent, go forth, and sin no more. Can I? Let's hope. Alright, this has been James. Grim Survival. It is kind of grim out here, though. But I'm going to have a good day. You should, too. Pray. You need to.